Welcome to another episode of Know Your DN. I'm your host, Mark Christopher, and today we're going over how to use tool load management on your DN turning center. Tool load management differs from machining center to turning center, but it comes standard on all of our machines. We're covering turning centers only today. So if you have a Puma, a DNT, a TT, or Lynx machine, it has the ability to monitor your tools for overload or breakage. Now before we get into it, let's cover what tool load management does. Obviously, it monitors your tool load on your spindle, but what the management side of the control does is tells you if that tool has become dull, possibly starting to gall, or it will tell you if the tool has actually broken. If it detects the load increasing or detects no load where there should be a load, it will alarm out and hopefully save your part as well as some important machining time. Let's hop on the control and add that extra layer of security for your tools and parts. We're going to assume that you have a working program and all of your tools are touched off and ready to go. At this point, I wanna to navigate to the IHMI home screen and press the easy work button on the control. Then I'll press the tool load monitoring button. On the surface, this page can be a little intimidating. I want you to think of this page as a dashboard or library specific to your tool load monitoring. With that in mind, let's break this dashboard down and make it work for us. The first thing we want to check is record mode and monitor mode. They should be gray. If one of them is a yellow lime color, simply press it to turn it off for now. All right, in the top left corner, you will see tool number. This is the current tool that has tool load data recorded that you are looking at. Over here on the top right side, you will see one of two. This is just telling you that this is the first tool of two that is monitored for tool load. The rest of these boxes are just your different axis and spindles with their different limits assigned to them. The zero to 2% bar is the current load on the axis. The max you see here is the maximum load recorded. The warn box is the warning load limit and the broken limit is the max limit that you can set that you want the machine to stop if it reaches that value. Everyone wants to know what these numbers represent. When your machine is recording the load limits, let's say your Z-axis max load limit records at 75%. If you want to keep a tight check on that tool, you can set your warn level to three and your break level to five. You're telling the machine if it reads 78% load on the Z axis, it needs to throw up the warning message, which will not stop your machine, but it will post a message to let the operator know it's starting to show an unhealthy load. As well, you are telling it if it reaches 80% load to stop completely. So to summarize the warn and break limits, these are just percentage values added on to your maximum recorded load limit for each axis of a particular tool. I want to call your attention to this center box. It has your current tool called. This information is based off of the tool offset you have called, and it might differ from what you see up in the top left. Down here in the bottom left is your record button. Once you have a working program and your tools are touched off, we will press this button and turn it on. This will start recording the tool loads from the time I press the cycle start button until it reaches the end of the program. The monitor button does just that. Once it has recorded the loads, you can set your warn and break levels and turn on the monitor load. Once this is pressed, the machine is monitoring the designated tools for their respective loads. The alarm clear button will clear any load alarms you have currently. Obviously, you don't want to reset this until you have replaced or inspected the tool or tools that have alarmed out. The next button is the data edit button. With the record and monitor buttons off, the data edit button will allow you to manipulate the warn and break levels. Simply use your arrow keys to scroll to the box you want to manipulate and type in the desired level and press input and the values will change. The one tool clear button will clear the max load units for the selected tool. The all set button, when pressed, will reveal two additional buttons. The all clear button will clear all of the tools that are registered in the tool load management screen. Last, limit reset will clear all of the warn and break levels for the selected tools. 
The TLM main button takes you back to the main tool load management screen. Next, we have a button called Backup. This is how you output the data file of your current tool load management, or you can input a previous tool load management file. When performing a file output or input, wait until the message reads Data Backup Complete before pressing any more buttons or removing the USB. The data is still loading in the background until you get this message. This is really handy to save for when you run the same part in the future. All you would have to do is upload the file back into the machine, touch off your tools, and turn on your monitoring. You also have a program make button. The machine will ask you for a program name and a data file number. What this button does is combines your part program to your current tool load management data and makes them into one file. You will need to give it a data file name for your tools and program number for your program. The last button is your alarm history button. It's pretty self-explanatory, but this button will give you a rundown of the tool alarms you've had previously associated with tool load. The history clear just does what you think and clears the previous warn and break messages. Again, I'm going to assume you have a working program and your tools touched off, so let's run our program and get our tool load monitoring set up. First, I'll navigate to the tool load monitoring screen as though I just got on the machine. I'm going to press the IHMI home button, then I'm going to press the easy work button, and then I'll press the tool load management button. Now I'm going to press the record mode button. Your button should turn a yellow line color. The tool load monitoring is now looking for you to press the cycle start button and it will start recording the different loads of the tools your program is using. When the machine reads the M30 in your program, it will automatically turn off record mode. One tip I like to give users right here is you may want to let it record a couple of times, especially if you're using brand new tools or inserts. After a couple of parts, those new edges wear down to what I call the working edge, and you will get a truer measurement to base your limits off of. Now let's press the data edit button and change any worn or break limits that need changing. Now that we have all of our limits set, the only thing left to do is turn the monitoring on by pressing the monitor mode button. It will turn a yellow lime color. The monitoring is now on and you can run your parts accordingly. Now let's talk about the day-to-day -day operation of the tool load monitoring and how to handle different situations that come up. Right off the bat, I want you to keep in mind that if the machine detects no load where it's expecting a load, it's going to throw an alarm. The other thing that happens that you need to keep in mind is that light cuts or small diameter tools cause the system to struggle to detect the load on the tool. These lighter cuts and smaller and thinner tools might cause you more trouble than they are worth trying to monitor. If you have a pause or air cutting in your program, you can use M200 and M201 in your part program to toggle monitoring off and on. Simply put, M200 pauses the monitoring and lets your program run, and M201 turns the monitoring back on. So if you get an alarm on a tool because it's cutting too much air, use M200 and M201 to work around this. Just of note, your monitoring light will stay on even if you are toggling the monitoring off and on within your program. So this brings me to my next scenario. Let's say we have five tools, but we don't want to monitor all five. We just want to monitor three. I need to eliminate monitoring for tool one and tool five. So here, I want to press the data edit button, navigate to the tool I want to eliminate, and press the one tool clear button. This will clear all of the loads for this particular tool. Of note, any max value set to zero, the machine will ignore that load for a possible alarm. Now let's say you have an alarm that gets triggered during machining. If you reach the warn level, you'll get a message in the center box of your tool load management screen that says, wear detect in yellow. And if you reach the break limit, you will get a message that says, break detect in red. As we discussed earlier, you can clear these alarms and their messages in the alarm history file. 
That was our in-depth guide into the tool load monitoring software exclusive to DN Solutions Turning Centers. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel to help us get this content in front of more DN machinists like yourself. And feel free to suggest a future topic in the comments. You can also follow us on Instagram and LinkedIn at DN Solutions America. If you have something you think is really cool that you have done with your DN machine, we love seeing it and telling others about it. So tag us and add the hashtag DN House. I wanna thank you for watching and keep making those chips fly with your DN machine.